Welcome back, Michael Ofito. Welcome back to the 34th episode of Luxury Lunch and Learn. As many of you know, we launched this uh, first week of April due to COVID-19. We've had some amazing guests on and I'm uh, really excited about today's guest. Uh, before I uh, introduce Michael, just a reminder, if you guys have any questions for, for Michael or myself, we're gonna stream this to uh, various Facebook groups. So if we get the questions during the actual live interview, we'll, we'll make sure we answer them during the live. But some of you do watch our replays on our YouTube channel, as well as the various groups. And so if it's directed towards me, I'll get back to you. If it's directed towards our guest, I'll make sure we pass it on to him. So ha happy Friday, uh, July 17th. Uh, it's my brother's birthday today. Oh. And um, I have a great guest on today and I've been following him um, a little bit before you moved over to EXP, uh, but really since you've, uh, you've taken on the executive vice president role and uh, about two, a little over two months ago now, right, That's May? Yeah, exactly. We've been yeah. very busy, but it's only been two months. It's been two months, man. Yeah. Uh, so Michael Valdez, right? I want to make sure I'm pronouncing that correct. Correct, Valdez, yes. yes. So uh, you're in New York right now, and tell everybody a little bit about, um, before we go into your current role, you had a significant role before this. So tell everybody about what your role was uh, with Sotheby's and under the Realty brand, if you would. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, first of all, thank you for the invitation to be on your show. It's Absolutely. really fun to sort of like be with you and have this conversation. You just had... Uh, my dear friend Jim Wong on, so it's uh, it's really great to uh, to also be here with you and all of your listeners. So uh, so yeah, so I just joined EXP as EVP about two months ago. Prior to that, I spent 15 years at Realogy Corporation. So 13 of those years, I was with Sotheby's. In the last two years, I was senior vice president of international for uh, Realogy, overseeing their brands there, which was. Sotheby's, C21, Caldwell Banker, ERA, Better Homes and Garden, and Corcoran. And so collectively, it was about 113 countries and all in about 300,000 agents. So uh, as I said, I joined EXP two, uh, two months ago, uh, really as an uh, international expansion uh, uh, um, focus. And uh, we're in three countries currently, Canada, the UK, and Australia. And we're in various parts of conversations with no less than 20 countries now. So there's going to be a great growth story coming here. Right. And you guys just hit over 31,000 agents, right? We're over 31,000 agents. We're at $1.2 billion market cap now. It is a very exciting time to be with this very innovative company. Oh, that's great. Good for you. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, and so you, you know, Based on your, your background and your history, you obviously are well connected, not just locally, but internationally, right? That's why, you know, EXP brought you in to help with the growth. Talk to me a little bit about, you know, COVID-19, you know, the, the world has changed as we know sure. it. But talk to me a little bit about what are you seeing out there, not just in the States, but talking to some of your affiliates and your connections yeah. internationally. You know, uh, Michael, the thing with the with the pandemic is that obviously it's a global virus. It's a global crisis, right? And so it was really interesting to get a pulse of what things were happening around the world. I'm also the uh, chairman of the board for ARIA Global Corporate Board of Governors. And I also sit on the board of NAREP. And uh, I had a ARIA Global meeting uh, a few weeks ago. And in that meeting, we had some great, great people that participate in that board. One of them is Gene Chi, who is the uh, president and CEO of a company called Key, K-E, uh, in, uh, in uh, Asia. And they are actually the largest real estate portal. And they have over 2,000 brokerages that are part of their portal. And that represents about a quarter of a million agents in mainland China. So really to get his vision and a pulse of what was going on post COVID was invaluable. His uh, message to us was really interesting. They were saying that first tier, kind of first tier uh, territories in China, such as Beijing and, and Shanghai, they were actually operating at 120% margins over year over year. So they not only came out of the crisis, but they actually had a lot of pent up demand. And it was really interesting to see that they were on such a great growth trajectory. It was also interesting because the last coronavirus historically was SARS. And SARS also started in Asia. 
And it was interesting to see that inverted V curve, which happened back in 2008. And this was a exact duplicate economically for them as to what it was before. So the fact that they had that historic data was really interesting. Sure. And then we now have the idea that Asia is now um, at least tier one cities um, looking to stand really, really positive territory. One of the things that he did mention is that currently, obviously, international travel, like all other places, are really very restricted. So right now, it's one flight internationally from one major city on one airline once a week. So one, one, one rule. So the idea would be that it's a San Francisco trip into Beijing or a JFK trip into Shanghai, whatever that it only once a week on one airline. So one day it could be Air China, the other day it's, you know, whatever it is, Lufthansa. Um, so that's where- How much are those tickets, by the way? Those have to be C-level well, executives, $10,000 tickets or something. Well, I don't even know how many people would want to be going right now, but it is, but it is sort of like there. And, um, and you know, it was interesting because I was actually in China in December before all this madness was happening. And so thankfully I never got ill and it was just like really, re really by the grace of God, but it was, uh, uh, but it was sort of like, you know, in the middle of, of, uh, of the pandemic there. And then, um, so moving on um, to, uh, to Europe, obviously Europe was also really hard hit. We have also seen a strong resurgence in countries like Italy and Spain, slowly coming out of this as well. And then where I'm at in New York City, where it was the epicenter in the United States, um, that was the New York City metropolitan area did see a decrease of about 9% historically and in, in, in since the start of, uh, of, of the pandemic, so right around March. And so, but what's interesting is that you have seen a lot of uh, people fleeing into other neighboring parts. So uh, Connecticut and Long Island has shown a 6% increase according, according to a very recent article in Reuters. And then you see- uh, and when you say 6%, you mean uh, the real estate market? Correct. Yeah. Six so percent increase in demand yep. over properties in in Connecticut and Long Island, and then um, anecdotally, it's the earliest that the Hampton season has ever started their rentals, and that was back in April. Hmm. Yeah. So, so you're you're in the, you're in New York. Uh, by the way, I was in New York uh, the last week of january for the inman connect event um, i was there too yeah and this is just when everything was starting to talk and and uh you know a couple weeks after that i spoke at the realty 2020 conference in niagara falls and then yeah. and then you know ncaa canceled and and it was and there friday the 13th friday the 13th was in illinois was our kids last day of school and then wow. i think sunday the 15th is when it was officially a, a, a right. pandemic yeah so, so you you know let's fast forward a little bit. So you give sure. us a little bit of history. You're um, with an exciting company. I know Glenn, and I got a good friend Brian Colhane. Brian was one of the yeah, first great guy. Uh, first in in, in EXP. Oh, he's taking our course, and he's a great guy. Um, you guys have seen a, a amazing growth. I think about uh, maybe about 14, 15 months ago, you were around eighteen thousand. Now you just went over thirty one thousand, and um, so they brought you in. They brought in. They brought in the muscle. They brought you in to, to help with the expansion internationally. And and um, I, I don't want to to share stuff that you can't share. But talk to me a little bit about you've been there two months and and sure. what uh, during a pandemic leaving a, a pretty good position to take on a new role. There's risk involved, right? And sure. um, that's one of the reasons I brought you on is is I teach agents all the time, when you grow your knowledge, your confidence will grow. And I, I tell agents, step out of your comfort zone. That's where the magic happens. So kudos to you, because you, you, maybe, you. maybe you're a big risk taker, but you stepped out of a lot of people's comfort zone during the middle of a pandemic to take on a, a new role. So uh, I, I always admire uh, people like yourself that, that do that. So talk to me about, you know, since you've been on in two and a half months and, and what you saw is, is as, as an opportunity, and, and and I'll leave it at that. 
So, you know, what's really interesting is that I was, uh, as I said, 15 years at Realogy. Prior to that, I was with Deutsche Bank for 10 years. So I'm very loyal to, to the companies that I work with. And so when I was really talking about a, a, another opportunity or another challenge or something that was going to be next, and I was talking to Glenn and Jason Guessing, the CEO, and Jeff Whiteside, the, uh, the CFO, really just great, great individuals and really just brilliant in the real estate community. And we started just talking about what would an ESP global look like, really look like. And when you start looking at what is the business plan for what EXP is, the technology that they have, this is some real estate community during a pandemic and a global pandemic at that, than what EXP was poised to do. Because of the fact that they had the Verbella technology, this is not, everyone is living on, on Facebook Live, on Instagram Live, on, on, on Teams, on Zoom, everything that everyone's gotten used to in the last six months or so. You know, people use these communication tools, give or take, very sparingly before then. But now everyone's on it, and this is our new normal. But now the idea of EXP World and the technology that EXP had with Verbella, it's been around for 10 years. It's been around since 2009. It's the idea that this has a decade of experience in it. And so they have built a community. They have built a sense of this is a deliverable with technology that not only works, but is proven into our day-to-day -day life. And so it's the idea that this has now brought a sense of community that we're all experiencing now in what we're doing. And the fact that we use these methods and these tools to reach out to our agents, our clients, our sense of doing business as it were. But now when you already have a platform that's based on a virtual model that's been proven for a decade, really there's no stopping you when you start looking at what a global expansion can look like. Things like most, most, most real estate transactions in Europe are closed by notary, right? And so when you have a notary that has to be in a bricks and mortar location, there's no choice but to have no business because there's nobody to sign those papers. If you can move a, a notary into an EXP world where everything is, is, is password protected, is encrypted, it's, uh, you know, we have um, large uh, accounting companies that have already done deals with Verbella uh, on their own to do virtual audits. So things where this becomes a deliverable, where business can grow and continue uninterrupted, it's, 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 it was a no brainer for me. That, that's, that's great. And you've been there for just under three months. Two months. Two yeah. months now, yeah. two months. Official date was May. May the May May the fourth, I believe it was. Okay. Yeah, so a little more. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, two yeah. and a half. Yeah, so yeah, there you are. Uh, okay, very good. And you guys recently expanded. When I say recently, over the last six months, with Britain and Australia. So we are. So our global footprint includes Canada, the United Kingdom, and Australia. Absolutely. Okay. Okay. Good. Yeah. And. What are some of your agents like right now? I mean, obviously they're well equipped with technology and the cloud, sure. and and because video is the, is 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 the new norm, right? And you Absolutely. know, last year we did thirty four trainings across the country, Michael, and and I would say ten percent of uh, of the audience, twenty in a good audience, was consistently using video, they're comfortable with video, they're comfortable with their smartphone, they had a YouTube channel with videos yeah. they've put up there in the last couple of weeks. And I'm seeing that, I'm seeing that increase, which is good, it needed to. Yeah. Um, are you seeing the same thing where agents that aren't comfortable with Zooms or getting in front of a camera, you know, uh, are you seeing more and more agents being more comfortable? Not only that, but we have actually on our last iteration of the of, of our uh, last upgrade on EXP World, we added video. So we had the avatars that, you know, is, is the EXP World system, right? Where all the agents become avatars in our world. But now, as of last week, we added a webcam version of that. So I could be in EXP World and then click on the web version and it just, it, it attaches to my camera 
on my on my uh, on my okay. computer. And so now you have my avatar version and my live version in the same capacity. So we really are mixing technologies into all of this. But to your point, Michael, you know, we, we're, we're human beings. This is like we're in a relationship business. Mm -hmm. And it's sort of like whatever you try to replace with technology, you know, the idea of us communicating in this form of seeing each other, it's invaluable because any agent out there their idea of communicating is just so much further of how they can do it if they do it on video. And there's so many other, there's, there's, there's so many sort of articles out there that prove this. Uh -huh. It's not, it's a great form of communication. And by the way, you don't really need the other side of the equation for that. So if you're, uh, if you have a client that you just can't get on the phone for whatever reason, you just got to get them information, send them a video. Uh -huh. They're going to connect more to that information than they would have if you sent it to them on a, on, on, on a, on a voice message or on an email. They're going to come back and they're going to play it again. And you're great at that, Michael. Your invite to me on the show was via video. Yeah. And so you. it made me actually sort of listen to it. Sure. Well, you I know? appreciate so that. I, I thought it was great. Well, yeah, so I've had um, bomb bomb on, you know, I'm a big believer of bomb bomb emails, but we yeah. talk about that. The, the benefit of video, of course, is it helps boost conversion because people feel like they know you, uh, they can read your body mannerisms and you build trust. Uh, so video is, is, is key. I, I, I love video for me. I, I'm more right brain, so I can articulate a message to yeah. you or somebody else like this with video and you speak from your heart and your authenticity right. comes through That's right. versus an eight paragraph email. That's right. And it's much more efficient and it's quicker and you get, and you actually can do many more of the videos because you're just speaking from your heart than you can sitting down and trying to figure out, is this going to be, is, is this email I just sent going to be received in the way that I intended it to be accepted? Yeah. Right. There's no yeah. confusion with video. Well, yeah, and text, can, you can construe text a text word. message, you know, like, what was their tone? Did they mean it this yeah, you way? Put the wrong punctuation down and you're yeah. done. Or even worse with autocorrect, you're done. Oh, I, 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 I could put together a book on text that I've sent because I'm doing voice to text. And, and like, oh, I, I hope they have a good sense of humor because, you know, I just said something to them that, oh, that's, that's the worst, isn't it? Oh, my goodness. Uh, right. Some really good information. So I had yesterday, so we had a, a, a virtual luxury designation this week. We had representation all across the world. It was really well received. And yesterday we did a bonus day. We called it our, our legends of luxury. And we had nine service providers that we really like and we trust and we recommend. And it was like yeah. speed dating. It was 15 minute <laughs> slots for two and a half hours. And wow. it was really well received. Um, and the one gentleman I had on uh, from Breakthrough Broker, they have over 450,000 agents in their database. Wow. Uh, he shared a statistic that was alarming. Eric Sachs, I believe it was Eric, 65% of agents haven't done anything, haven't done anything uh, really over the course of a good, you know, eight to 10 weeks. In other words, you know, COVID hit, and they froze. They didn't know what to do. And they didn't continue to put themselves out there. They didn't continue to invest in themselves. They didn't reach out to their database to check in. They, they literally balled up in a shell and just watched documentaries or whatever. Yeah. And I know certain states were more open than other states, right? New York was very difficult and, and Pennsylvania and, and other states where you couldn't freely, weren't considered an essential business. But the point that I'm trying to make is you have to invest in yourself. You, you can't be, I tell agents all the time, shy real estate agents have skinny kids. You know, you, you can't be shy in this industry, Michael. You gotta put yourself out there. You know what I say, Michael? It's sort of like, it, it's sort of like we can't act emotionally, right? So if you started looking at the word emotion, the E to me is all the excuses that we give ourselves. If you, if you take the E away, all you're left with is motion. And so if you take away all your excuses, all you can do is just go. And so that's what you needed to do. And so, you know, we're not the ones that need to sort of like take care of our colleagues in the industry. It's like, 
you know, you need to figure back out what your why was, why you entered this. Mm -hmm. And so it is the fact that it, when there is a crisis, that's when, you know, those that, that, that reinvent and those that are actually doing things. And by doing things, it's just getting up and calling your client base. Everyone went through this at the same time across the world. This was when you proved to everyone that you cared and that you were a human being and that you actually reached out to everyone and just sort of saying, are you okay? You're not selling real estate. You're just really just proving that you're part of this relationship. We really said from the beginning that this is a relationship business. And if 65% of the people that, that are in this business didn't do anything for the last 10 weeks, then those that did will have a lot more business coming because those 65 people, 65% will not be in the business much longer. Yeah. Yeah, no, you're, you're, you're absolutely right. And, and so that was kind of the message that he mentioned as well is, 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 hey, those of you that are on this training this week or watching this video, if, the, if you were part of that 65%, I'm, I'm not going to shame you. You know, we have the windshield shield in your car is a lot bigger than the rear view mirror. So what can you do today, July 17th, moving forward? Okay. Right. So if you were part of that and you didn't do a whole lot, it's okay. What can you do moving forward? Cause you got, you do have some ground to make up, uh, but it's not too late by any means, because in the big picture of things, it was only three months. So really but good. I get out that, 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 that 65% percentage is actually part of your listeners because this is an action step, listening to what you're doing, people that are attending your uh, classes, your training sessions, they're actually doing something. So by definition, your listeners are not part of that 65% because this is motion. Even listening to you and listening to what this is and really trying to just find out if they were stalled, they're in motion just by this simple fact of being of uh, being a participant in this in this process that you're doing yeah that's a great that's a great point you know the old body in motion stays in motion that's it so um a couple things here uh, and then i want to wrap up because my internet connection is terrible today i apologize um, <laughs> so first it. off in your opinion michael when things go back to normal the agents the team leaders, the brokers that will be most successful are those that have blank in common. If you were to fill it in with one or two words, those agents, those broker owners, those team leaders that are most successful will have blank in common. We'll have, we'll have a business plan. We'll have a plan of action. We'll have an idea of where they want to go to. They, that's really been, I'm, I'm a huge, proponent. I came from the banking world and I was in real estate for the last 16 years now and I was in banking for 10 years prior to that. It's always the idea of knowing, having a plan to know when you're going somewhere and when you achieve it. It's the idea of what your goals are. To me, I always say success is a math problem. Figure out how, how much you want to make in a, in a current year. Divide by 12. That's your monthly goal. Divide by four. That's your weekly goal. Then you figure out what you need to do to get there. It is math problem. Success is simply a math problem. If you have a plan, it will guide you there. And so and it's, it's not a plan that's written in stone. You know, you shift. When there are things that happen, like coronavirus, nobody knew this. Nobody was expecting this in their life. And so what you need to just do is be able to be mobile and shift and agile. It's not as though, oh my God, I lost three months of my plan. I should put my plan out. No, you should just readjust your plan and figure out how we get there. Those three months should not have been stagnant months either, as we just mentioned. Yeah, that's a, that's a great plan. Can you still hear me? I can, you're, you're, you're I, I, I have parts of you, Michael, I have parts right. of you. Okay, so hey. <laughs> For somebody that wants to find out more information about EXP, maybe they, they, they've heard about it or they haven't heard about it, um, where's a good place for, for them to go, Michael? So it's uh, exprealty.com. They can find out about EXP there. Um, you're happy to have your audience uh, reach out to me directly if they like. They can find me on social media. I also have a podcast that I do on global luxury. 
that website is glrem.com, which stands for Global Luxury Real Estate Mastermind. It's a, uh, it's a podcast that I do every week. It's out every Tuesday. And uh, it's, uh, it's a very international uh, podcast. Uh, about 75% of my audience is outside of the United States. I, I want to ask you about that. G-L-R-E-M.com. Right. You got it. Uh, how, how many podcasts have you put out? What number are you on? So I think I'm at uh, about 30, 30, 34, something like that. That's awesome. Good for you. We're, yeah, we're gonna be, what's that? Yeah, we're, we're releasing our hundreds. Yes, I was just agreeing with you. Thank you. Yeah, no, that's awesome. Uh, wow. we, we launched ours three and a half years ago. We're releasing our hundredth podcast next week. Oh my God, congratulations. Yeah, and, 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 and we're gonna actually convert yours into a podcast episode um, because you provided such great content, Michael. Uh, you're, so, so am I 99? Is that what you're telling me? Uh, you are, no, 99's <laughs> out there. You're going to probably be like 104-ish. That's okay. okay. <laughs> you tell me a number you want and I'll make it, but it's, it's going to be after 100, okay? You got a lucky number? Yep. 100? All right. Well, hey, listen, thank you so much for taking time on a Friday. Um, again, check them out. Uh, check out glrem.com. And I'm, I'm looking forward to listening to your podcast. Thank you, Michael. Uh, check out exprealty.com. Appreciate all you're doing. And uh, keep raising the bar in real estate. Okay, Michael? Michael, thank you so much. And you do the same. It's been a pleasure. Thank you, right. sir. Appreciate it. Thanks, guys. Take care, Take care. Bye-bye. Right, Bye-bye.